So most of us have done this before, sticking our vegetables or fruits in the fridge and forgetting about them. I need some tomato. Oh no. It's rotten, it's mouldy. Uh, oh well. I call it the instant noodle city lifestyle. If we need something, it's very convenient. We can use smartphone, we can go downstairs, there's always convenience store. Food becomes a lifeless thing that is being put on the shelf. The moment we kind of productize food, it's the start of the broken relationship. That broken relationship leads to all this. Literal mountains of food waste. Out of every three tons of food that is produced for human consumption, one ton never makes it to our stomachs. In cities like Hong Kong and Singapore, more than half of food waste happens at the retail and consumer stage. Oh, it's a new shoot from my old Kang Kong. Never thought I'd be someone who grew stuff because I just never had an interest in it. Very honestly speaking. Look at like how huge they've grown. Honestly, I think I put in more effort like growing Kang Kong and like bok choy than I did like A levels. Would we be less careless if we learned to rebuild our relationship with food? I mean, it's fun, right? It's kind of helps me de-stress and it's quite rewarding to see the fruits of your labour actually kind of grow. Is one answer to be found in the city itself? When you live in a big city and when you've got kids who've only really grown up in big cities, they really have no concept of where stuff comes from. I mean, really, food comes in a plastic wrap thing from the supermarket. With food so conveniently at hand, we never have to think about how it's actually grown. I remember watching this video. Somebody asked the kid, so, you know, where does the food come from? And this little girl says, oh, it comes from the supermarket. And where do you think the supermarket gets the food from? I think they get it from the shop. Well, where do you think the shop gets it from? I think they get it from the supermarket. Generational amnesia is that the younger generations are now completely oblivious of what life was perhaps 20 years before they were born. In the context of food, in developed countries, the fact that there is always enough to go around is what is on people's mind. In short, the effort and resources it takes to produce something like this is beyond our imagination. For example, it can take about 700 litres of water to produce just one litre of milk, or 822 litres of water to produce one kilogram of apples. But when we see a bruise on our apple... One time I was with my boyfriend at a supermarket. I dropped this apple onto the floor and there was a dent and it started to brown. And he was like, spoil already, don't buy already. But maybe there's a way to open people's eyes. I think the idea for us when we first started out was to make farming very commonplace. I think the solution that I could see was to bring the farms into the city rather than bringing the people into the farms out there. These employees of a real estate company are learning to grow food right on the rooftop of their office building. What was once an idle space is now an edible paradise with eggplants, blue pea flowers, chilies, and more. You are connected to food on a daily basis in proximity to where you live, where you work, and where you play. By helping organizations to design and run their own urban farms, Rooftop Republic hopes to expose more city folks to the basics of food production. There are always reservations. Oh, how do we deal with the loading? Or how do we deal with typhoons? Or how do we deal with accessibility to the rooftop? They're never a stopper. These are all problems that we can very easily solve. And to take it even further, we started the Rooftop Republic Academy last year with the support of DBS Foundation. The Academy offers workshops for beginners and professional vocational courses. Over in Singapore, 
social enterprise Edible Garden City is on a similar urban mission. So we're actually right on top of the shopping mall. We grow all these fruits, vegetables and herbs for restaurants. We tend to focus on these type of plants that grow well in like this sunny, humid uh, environment. The social enterprise has been helping schools, malls and office buildings set up farms over the past eight years. We want to shift mindsets to look into productive landscapes. So instead of growing an ornamental tree, uh, could we be growing a food producing tree? A lot of people don't realise you can eat and that I think is very safe is uh, basil flower. We want people to experience the entire process of growing their own food. How hard it is. Actually, very exciting. We we'll have to wait for a very long time for it to slowly grow from a small little plant. It's a pity that not many people actually realise how much effort comes into food that we eat every day. But wait. Does seeing and growing our own food really make us appreciate our food better? We're going to the balcony. This is my urban farming plot. It's a little balcony outside my brother's room. Hey, my name is Amanda. I started growing my own food, bok choy and kangkong in September 2020, so just a couple of months ago. I'm Gerald. I've been growing stuff for maybe over a decade. So it's really convenient because our vegetables are literally right outside the kitchen. So we can get the vegetables from there and it goes straight to the stove here. In Singapore, there's a growing movement of home growers going by all these groups popping up. Everyone from beginners to advanced gardeners, even in very small flats. These are the bok choys. Instead of just hearing about it, I wanted to engage with the process of growing so that I could really understand what it means to produce my own food. But the first few attempts weren't so smooth for Amanda. It's a lot harder than it seems. Every single morning, I would wake up and like, why are you not sprouting yet? You should be germinating in three days. Like, why are you not doing that? And after all that waiting, her seedlings turned out limp. I got very anxious. I was like, oh my god, I cannot fail. Then finally, they're standing again. Going through all of that made me realise how much effort goes into See your plant grow from I mean literally just like this small dot and then it grows into something that can feed you I'm just a bit like, wow! It's time to do some harvest! Like when I was younger, I didn't eat a lot of like stems But now I'm like, you know what? I appreciate what I'm eating and therefore I'll just eat the bulk of it Out here we've got cafe lime, a star fruit tree This is Jiku We're on our air conditioner space as well so we've got uh, Gang Gong here. Those are little seedlings of Gailan. With his own vegetables, fruits and herbs within reach, Gerald and his family buy less at the supermarket now. You understand that actually food gets grown in a certain way. It needs to go through a whole bunch of stuff before it gets to your plate. So we'll actually think about, okay, well, what are the meals that we're going to cook in the next two or three days? And what do we need to make those meals? And then we'll just buy those things. In fact, since growing their own food, Amanda and Gerald have become hyper-conscious about every little bit of waste they're generating at home. Uh, these are food scraps, um, vegetable and fruit peels from about two to three weeks ago accumulated. So now I'm going to feed this to my worms. Yup, worms. And Amanda's got about a hundred of them to help eat up her food scraps and... I'm going to be um, harvesting my vermi compost, basically worm poop. Ooh. It's basically fertiliser law, so instead of buying fertiliser, just use whatever I have at home. I think all that worm juice, yeah. I think it was only when I started growing, when I started to be like, you know what, I need the food to be channeled somewhere if I'm going to waste it. I mean, more recently we also thought about food waste as your vegetables, you cut the ends off, right? And, and that's food as well. Well, we just threw it out. After a couple of days, that fills up completely and then we'll empty that out of the back where we've got the compost bin. It becomes um, fertilizer for, for the next thing that I want to grow. Still, not everybody gets to grow their own food at home. This group in Taiwan has found another way to connect consumers to their food supply more directly. 
by letting them share the growing experience with farmers. On the Buy Directly from Farmers e-commerce platform, consumers can adopt a plot of land and watch in real time as farmers plant, harvest and battle various elements to grow crops. They're even going as far as telling consumers that every bit of their fruit or vegetable, right down to its skin, can actually be eaten. Back in the city, urban farming is not just rebuilding our relationship with food, it's also rediscovering something else. This is the money chai. It used to be a lot more commonly found. Long neglected native species and other edible plants that do well in our tropical climate. And it tastes like super amazing. We had a habit of eating uh, a lot of brassica vegetables, so bok choy, chai sin, kai lan. These vegetables are not climatically suited for Singapore. Uh, they, are, they are nicer to grow in colder climates, they thrive a lot more. We should really be looking within a lot more than concentrating on importing things that we can find local alternatives for. A Mexican tarragon in, in replacement for French tarragon, for instance. Whether it's growing native vegetables or local favourites, urban farming has a hand in reducing global food wastage. Cities like Singapore and Hong Kong import close to 90% of their food. And this supply chain that we rely on is deeply flawed. In the global food system, food loss and food waste happens at every step of the way, from the fields, from production, to distribution, to storage. And because the supply chain is so long, we are inevitably participating in a very wasteful system. So shortening the supply chain is one way of not participating in that. Our current food system relies so heavily in terms of the success of the global food supply chain. He's talking about how the COVID-19 pandemic set off a wave of panic buying when tons of produce were stuck in farms unable to be distributed due to disruptions in logistics and transportation. Singapore and other cities, there are also a lot of other untapped spaces like car parks, right? like playgrounds, like other open areas. Through tapping into those untapped resources, we're able to actualize and implement a local decentralized food system. And how might that look like? This community garden in Singapore is run by Tony and his band of volunteers. And there are hundreds more across the city. Instead of having centralised distribution spaces like supermarkets, wet markets, uh, perhaps small community farms uh, can be also that source of supply. Every two weeks, Residents in the vicinity get to enjoy all this fresh produce. And over in Hong Kong, its rooftops offer soaring opportunities. Six million square meters worth of potential farmable space. Essentially, if we were to convert all the rooftops into farms, we will be doubling the amount of food that Hong Kong is producing. So I quit my job, right, to, to start Rooftop Republic, and I was like, oh dear, I'm after like, I don't know, one year am I going to eat my own veggies to survive? Five years on, the social enterprise has worked with clients like property developers, shopping malls, 
hotels, restaurants and homeowners to convert 65 rooftop spaces into productive farms. At Edible Garden City, the goal is to convert every usable space in the city into food growing space. What we want to do is to build capacity within local people, local spaces, uh, ensure the infrastructure is there, the knowledge is there. You see climbers like these, like a cucumber vine, right? So you see. And the excitement is there, you know, so that when there is a time of need, everyone can go out and participate in that process. Quite a lot, Lee. <laughs> Urban farming has a lot of potential, but it will take some time to unlock it. When I see my next door neighbour having this little kitchen garden in their small balcony, I also get encouraged to maybe try putting one or two pots in my windowsill as well. And if you'd like to give home growing a shot, here's some advice from Amanda and Gerald. Start with something simple, like it doesn't cost much. You can't feel a kangkong. If you feel a kangkong, I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. This is a hundred plus container. You don't need a lot of space and you don't even really need a pot. So it was pretty easy. It's literally putting soil into a box, sowing the seeds in there and, and watering it. It probably takes 10 minutes to set up and then a couple of minutes a day watering it again. Food wastage and it can be a little bit overwhelming and you're kind of thinking, well, okay, that's so big and it's so far away, you know, what can I do about it? Here's today's harvest. You can grow your own vegetables at home. And it's quite rewarding to see the fruits of your labor actually kind of grow.